Hello, everyone. I'm Cindy Walter. And I'm Susan Wheeler. And we are here with week seven of our 90-day game plan. So let's see. Week seven's focus is setting a short-term and a long-term goal and sharing it with someone to hold you accountable. So we kind of have talked about having a goal buddy and accountability partner. So this week, whoever that is for you, um, set a short-term and long-term goal and share it with someone. So your goals through your 90-day game plan. I know Sue and I talk about our goals almost on a daily basis. We do a check-in with each other. Where are you at? Who have you talked to? Who's enrolling? Who's promoting? Um, so find an accountability partner and do that. We are going to start off talking about last week your challenge was to enroll two people. And Sue did a U plus two. Let me guess. Do you have your little my, Oh, I don't have my foam fingers. They're in the closet. No foam fingers today. So sorry. I'm sure you guys were all excited and waiting for the foam fingers. Um, but it, you would get a chance into the drawing if you enrolled two people. And you would get a chance in if you promoted a consultant. And if you did both things, you got 10 chances in there. So to my knowledge of everyone that RSVP'd on time, no one did both. We had a lot of people who enrolled too. We had a lot of people who promoted a consultant. So I have a list of names in here Oop, for my random drawing. All right, let's see. Marla Gosser, right here in Ohio. I won't have to ship this off. Well, she's about an hour and a half from me. I might. Congratulations, Marla. Congratulations, Marla. Uh, what I have for you is, if you have not gotten these babies yet, the body wash and the hand cream. So I have those for you, and I have Isogenics little ear phone or earbuds that you can use while you're at the gym listening to your music, rocking it out, or listening to your podcast, better yet. Wow. All right, so congratulations, Marla. I'll hook up with you and get that to you this week. All right, so today we're talking about sharing your story. And one of the things Sue and I do on an accountability basis is, you know, each day as we're out and about just doing our normal daily tasks, going to the bank, the post office, whatever, running errands, going to the car wash like Sue does on a daily basis. If we are um, out and about talking, we always are networking and connecting and somehow we can always get isogenics into the conversation. So I'm going to ask Sue to share a story she just shared with me, I think a week or two ago, about how she's just meeting someone and getting to the point where she's asking questions and turning it around where she's able to tell her isogenic story. So take it away, Susan. Awesome. Well, the car wash is quick, so um, you don't have a lot of time to talk. You've got to get in and out of there. You have as much time as it takes for your car to go through. So I was paying and the girl was, um, she was just friendly and nice. And I said, oh, is this your only job? And she said, yeah, everybody wonders why I'm just working at a car wash. She, and I, she said, it's not what I want to do for my whole life. And I said, well, what do you want to do? She goes, I don't really know. And I said, well, what do you like to do? She goes, I like to talk to people. And I like animals. And uh, so um, she had some running gear that they were um, running for canines. And so she said that she would actually, so I said, well, geez, you should do what I do. And she said, what do you do? And I said, I talk to people. I help people get um, with their running performance. I help people lose weight. Um, I help people earn money. And she said, oh, I would love that. So I invited her to one of my meetings and I added her to HHP, but it was just a real, um, you know, just a real quick moment, just chatting with her, but I asked her questions. Um, and I think that that's where people get a little stuck. They, they start telling their story. And if I had just gone up to her and said, hey, I have this job that I love and I talk to people and we help people lose weight and, and uh, earn money, do, I have a meeting tonight, do you wanna come? It would have been weird, you know? Yeah. So by asking her a couple questions, I was able to, to say what I wanted to say. Um, and really, uh, it, it's, you know, she was talking about her job, and that's kind of where I led it to begin with. Um, but of course, there's always the weight loss. Um, you know, you're not going to go up to someone who's, you know, completely physically fit, and, you, you know, when you start asking them questions, it's not going to be weight loss. Right. Right. So you've got to have kind of your weight loss story for someone that 
might need that. Um, she was working, so I figured, you know, I was going to ask her about her job. Um, for, you know, for healthy aging, um, you, you know, you kind of want to talk to people about that. Um, you know, if someone says, you know, how are you today? And they tell you, oh, I'm exhausted. Really? You know, or do you have problems with energy? And I help people get more energy. So your story is always a little bit different depending on who you're talking to and the questions that you ask. Right. You can't have one scripted story that's going to work for everyone. A couple things that just popped out to me as you were speaking. One, um, a couple years ago, we went to ICU in Boston when we had that big blizzard and we got snowed in. And I remember Eric um, Coover sharing a story about him being on an airplane with this couple that were older than him. Um, they were sitting right in, right with him in the same row. And when he was talking to them, he was asking them questions and they were both physically fit. Um, they didn't have weight to lose. He was asking them questions. So when it, it turned around to, they asked him, because people will always ask you back. Most often, if you ask someone, what do you do? Or what are your interests? And you're asking about them. Most often, they come back and ask about you, unless they don't care <laughs> about, you know, re returning that reciprocation. That happens but sometimes. That does happen. But most people will say, well, what do you do? So when, when they turned it back to Eric and said, what do you do? He said, I help people age more gracefully. And he said the wife about jumped into his lap. She was so stinking excited to hear what he had to say. So one of the things, you know, both Susan and I have um, coached, been coaching with Jeffrey Combs. And one of the things that he says in every free podcast you guys can listen to on goldenmastermind.com is there is an art in asking questions. You can make this so comfortable. If you're brand spanking new, it is more important for you to learn how to ask questions of people than it is to memorize every ingredient of every product. Ask people questions about themselves so you can find the, the missing link. For Sue, this girl at the car wash, she is, she's an athlete. She, she wants better performance, energy. She doesn't care about losing weight or probably not even help aging, aging gracefully at this point. So it's asking the right questions, finding out what the client needs, and then filling, offering to fill that void with our solutions. So also, you know, we talk about if you've been following Lynette and Paul, the periscopes and everything that we've been doing within our HHP group, we talk about the four F's. And the bottom line with that is as you're speaking to people, you know, when someone says to you, what do you do? Because hopefully you've asked them first, you've had this conversation, you're connecting just like Sue did at the car wash. They turn it around. What do you do? And you make this pertinent to them. So help people get fit might not work if you're talking to someone that does not care about being fit right now. So that's one of them. You, you, I help people get fit. I help people feel fabulous. I help people become financially free. Are you on Facebook? Those are the four Fs. Now, I'm not going to recite those. I'm not going to meet this girl in the car wash and say, well, I help people get fit, feel fabulous, become financially free. Are you on Facebook? I'm not going to say that verbatim. I'm going to make it very comfortable in my conversation. And if one of those pieces don't align with what they're telling me, I'm not going to say it. So I might say, um, for someone that has weight to lose, I might say, I help people feel better, lose weight and feel better. Um, I also help people become financially free, but always end and each conversation with, are you on Facebook? That's the, the key thing in the four Fs. Are you on Facebook? Because how much of your business would you say has come from Facebook, Sue? Oh, gosh. I didn't really realize how much really did. But I w I'll have to say 90%. Yeah. I'd have to a agree. Lot. I'd a have lot. to agree. I mean, I do a lot of launch parties. However, I connect with people on Facebook and, and bring them to my launch parties. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I'd have to say 90%. Exactly. So um, this Thursday is our text blitz day, and next week is launch party week. So the goal is for everyone who is watching this video to get out on textbook day and make a bunch of text, text messages. You could do um, like we've been taught to do, coffee, lunch, chat, whatever you want to do. The bottom line is you do want to get on the phone or in front of people, but start it with a text blitz. So start that on Thursday. And then um, we want to know, and hopefully by doing that, you can set up launch parties for next week. So, you know, keep that in the back of your mind as you're texting everybody on Thursday, you're trying to set up launch parties for next week. So next week can be a huge week, but we want to know how many times you're sharing your story. Go ahead, Sue. 
I just want to interject with on the text blitz part. What I like to do when I'm doing a text blitz is I don't have time. You know, I live out pretty far away and a lot of my people aren't even nearby. So what I like to do is text people, how's it going? Um, you know, stuff like that. Just get a conversation going too. So right. you don't always have to, you know, make your calendar, calendar with dates. Right, right. Absolutely. The whole, the, the bottom line with a text blitz is to get in touch with people who are in your prospecting list and get, get that conversation going again. And I, um, I also count Facebook messaging in there. So it's not just text blitzing, but Facebook messaging that for me, I, I talk to a lot of people via Facebook. So, um, you can do it either way. We're going to have a contest and, um, what we're going to do is keep track of, you're going to just text away. What we're going to keep track of is how many times are you sharing your story between now and Sunday night? How many times are you sharing your story? So you might text blitz 100 people, but how many times face-to-face -face or on the phone or in person are you sharing your story? And the top sharer of storytelling this week will get a prize. How does that sound? I love it. You love it? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, Sue? Should they just comment in the thread that we start? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they're probably going to have to, um, you know, put a, you know, towards the end of the week, how many times. So keep track yourself, you know, and as we get to the weekend, start posting. Yeah, don't make us add up um, how many times. We need a total at the end of the week, so we're not going cray cray. So yeah, you, can, wanna... you can keep posting. Yeah. <laughs> Keep posting throughout the week to keep things excited and to keep everybody engaged and, you know, keep that momentum up. But at the end of the week on Sunday, give, give us a total. So it makes, um, it makes figuring out the winner a lot easier on us. All right. right. I think we kept things short, simple, and specific today. Three S's. I I think we did. And um, I was just going to say, we have our accountability partners. You know, if you have one, share your story with them, talk with them and see what their story is, you know, run it by them. So, you know, but it's just really asking questions. You know, you're, I, I think we get really fooled into the fact that we have to go on and on and on and on. Right. And people only want to hear this much. It's all about them. They want to, you know, yeah. so you really get comfortable with people when you ask questions. And, and honestly, guys, this HHP group, all you need to do is connect with someone, find out if they're on Facebook, make friends on Facebook, ask for their permission to add you into the HHP group. And gosh, we do the recruiting for you there. That group is amazing. It's so high energy. So many people that are coming there as a prospect and in, in getting in there, even if they're super skeptical, are seeing the excitement and they're enrolling. We are getting enrollments from this. So we have a system in place. It is easy. It's duplicatable. Don't overcomplicate this. It is as easy as having a conversation with someone, friending them on Facebook, adding them to HHP, getting them enrolled, great results from their products. The next thing you know, they're going to want to share, be part of ISA for, for wealth, and then we'll help them you know, take their business to the next level. So you guys can do it. Have a great week. Yay. Thanks right. so much. Good luck. Tell Good your luck, story. Everybody. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.